Are you tired of being lied to? I know I am. I'm getting really sick and tired of all the just nonsense that's been coming out over the last year. Uh, just the deception after deception. Oh, now this, we can't do this. And oh, now we've proved this. Well, where's your, did you have, have you done any scientific studies? Well, no, but we know for sure that you can't this or that. Well, doesn't that convict or contradict, uh, you know, established medical principles of quarantining and whatever else in the past and immunology when somebody gets a sickness, a certain thing, then they're immune from it because their body builds antibodies to it. And but, yeah, but that was in the past. Now it's new. Now we have new science, you know, now we can overthrow things, you know, stay six feet apart from people and things because you might get some kind of a sickness and that you can get without knowing and it, it, deception, a lot of deception. What does the Bible say about this? Second Timothy chapter three, verses 12 through 13. You turn there in your King James Bible. Yea, all and all that will live godly in Christ Jesus shall suffer persecution. Just the way it is. But evil men and seducers shall wax worse and worse, deceiving and being deceived. I find that interesting. All these people in the medical establishment that, that are saying about take the vaccine, take the vaccine. Um, and yet what's happening? They're taking the vaccine and they're, you know, getting all the toxicity into their bodies and things. And I mean, I've read the reports and, and articles and things. And these people are saying that they had adverse effects from it and, and whatever. And what are they doing? They're deceiving and they're being deceived. Hmm. And what does the Bible classify them as? Evil men. Well, no, they're, they're innocent. They just don't know anything. They're, they're evil. Okay? Evil men and seducers. What's the news media? Get a bunch of uh, attractive women nowadays on the, in the news media with low cut tops and whatever else and things. And, and we're here today to talk to you about such and such. Yeah, you're a seducer. They're witches. You say, well, that's kind of radical. Lines up with the scriptures there, doesn't it? Hmm. I'd rather line up here than with the world. Let's go to uh, Matthew chapter 24. Matthew chapter 24. We're going to see here what Jesus Christ told his disciples. They ask him a very interesting question. If you've been saved for a while, I'm sure you know where I'm going with this. But if you've been saved recently, you probably might not have seen this yet. Matthew chapter 24, verses 3 through 5. And as he sat upon the Mount of Olives, speaking about Jesus, the disciples came unto him privately, saying, Tell us, when shall these things be, and what shall be the sign of thy coming and of the end of the world? And Jesus answered and said unto them, Take heed that no man deceive you. Why didn't he say, um, well, the first thing is, he starts out with saying, here are the signs of the end times, deception. Take heed that no man deceive you. Take heed. Heed, not just a thing of, oh, well, it's just obvious. You're to take heed. But look at verse 5. For many shall come in my name, saying, I am Christ, and shall deceive many. I think one of the most disgusting things out there is when you meet somebody that's a deceiver, just totally lying, they're wicked, they're evil, and you say, well, you know, as a Christian, I think that this is wrong or that's wrong, and they'll say, oh, I'm a Christian too. Well, they're not saying that they are Christ necessarily, but they're saying that they're in Christ. I'm a Christian. Hmm. Funny too, because every Catholic priest out there is another Christ, according to Roman Catholic doctrine. I've showed that in multiple studies. They're all deceivers, saying I am Christ. And they will deceive a few? No, they deceive many. John chapter 8 Show you another verse here about liars. It's, it's very important too, by the way, if you're a viewer, you need to have a paper King James Bible. All right, don't get this online stuff and whatever else. I just need to state that. And you just say, well, just watch the video or something or, or listen to it. Well, listening to it's fine while you're working. I get that or doing whatever. But 
it comes down to the very important fact of you need to have a paper King James Bible, right? And you can get really nice ones, you know, Cambridge or, or uh, church Bible publishers or whatever. You can get some really nice ones, but you can go down to a dollar store and get one for a dollar. The King James Bible. Don't get any other version in English. The other ones trace back to the Vatican. But it's very important to have a King James Bible. I can't state that enough. And you need to read along. You watch other videos and watch anybody that uses a King James Bible, watch them. Go ahead, watch them. And the Lord will show you before long whether they're a liar or, or telling you the truth. But you follow along in your King James Bible. And if they're not telling you to turn in your King James Bible, if they're not holding a King James Bible, uh, you probably should run away from them. I've seen a lot of these modern preachers and they'll actually stand there with some kind of a little electronic device and that's their Bible that they read. I had one of my viewers commented the one time they said their grandmother, I think it was, told them, if you ever see a preacher that's afraid to touch a King James Bible, you shouldn't trust them. You're dealing with a snake. You're dealing with somebody that's wicked. I'm not afraid to touch this book, and you shouldn't be either. John chapter 8, verse 43 through 47. Here's what the Lord thinks about these liars. Why do you not understand my speech, even because you cannot hear my word? Ye are of your father the devil, and the lusts of your father ye will do. He was a murderer from the beginning, and abode not in the truth, because there is no truth in him. When he speaketh a lie, he speaketh of his own, for he is a liar and the father of it. And because I tell you the truth, ye believe me not. Which of you convinceth me of sin? And if I say the truth, why do you not believe me? He that is of God heareth God's words. Ye therefore hear them not, because ye are not of God. Oh, well, we should rewrite the Bible to make it un more understandable to the lost world. No. He that is of God heareth God's words. Ye therefore hear them not, because ye are not of God. You can't make this book palatable to the lost world. They hate it. They can't stand it. You get the, the, some of the scholarly people out there and things, the, the highly educated, they'll look at this as a great work of prose and poetry and whatever. But you say, is it the truth? Well, no, you know, I, I can't really go along. They know that this is a great book. It's, a, it's the greatest book that's ever been written in the history of man. It's the most printed, most published book ever in history, this King James Bible. Scholars will admit to that, but they certainly won't follow it. You can't change this book to make it line up with the lost world. And you can't get this book to line up with what's going on in the world today and the lies and the deception that's out there. You can't do it. You just can't. Finally, let's go to Revelation chapter 22. I'll show you the uh, final conclusion of the matter. Revelation 22 and verse 14 and 15. Blessed are they that do his commandments, that they may have right to the tree of life and may enter in through the gates into the city. All right. Now that's talking about saints there in the thousand year reign of Jesus Christ. We don't have to do his commandments today. Then we don't need the tree of life to obtain eternal, you know, life and things, but they will. But I need to show the contrast there. Okay. You have saved people there in verse 14, verse 15, for without... Without there, they're not in the city, in other words, the city, New Jerusalem there. For without are dogs and sorcerers and whoremongers and murderers and idolaters, and look at this, whosoever loveth and maketh a lie. Huh. You know the people that like to make lies, they actually love those lies. They enjoy it. You'll see them with their uh, little duping delight thing where they'll, they'll, as they're talking to you about their truth, they'll actually laugh at you. Just saw yesterday there was all this uh, shooting things and everything else with uh, this down in Boulder, Colorado. This guy goes into a grocery store and shoots up a bunch of people. And they talked to Kamala Harris and they said, what do you think about this? And she's, you know, just you can see you know, she's got her little face mask thing on there. But you can see she's trying to con conceal a smile and just kind of. And they'll, these politicians, they'll do that and then they switch it off and then they do that and then they switch it off. And she's a, it's, it's tragic. It's, it was tragic. And um, um, yeah, what I think of the families is tragic. And uh, the, the whole thing is just tragic. <laughs> saying tragic. These politicians, you'll see them and they'll laugh. 
because they know what it's about. Stage managed events and false flag operations, they understand. They have an agenda. They want to divide the country. They're liars. They love their lies. That's why they laugh. You'll see these doctors and they're saying, oh, I think it's good that you get the, the thing that I won't even say it, you know, but that you get the, you get the pokey pokey here and, and, and I think this is good. And they're smiling and, and things and then they shut off and then they smile and what do you have? They're evil. They're seducing. They're waxing worse and worse. Oh, Brother Brian, I don't know. I think that we're going to go back to a time of peace and liberty and we're going to bring back the Republic and restore the Republic and we're... No, we're not. No, we're not. Um, hate to tell you, brethren, but uh, it's just going to get worse and worse. And you better start shifting your thinking, start shifting the way that you live. Uh, I should probably do a study on this sometime, but uh, the greatest temptation for a Christian is to fit in with this world. I better say that one more time. The greatest temptation for a Christian is to fit in with this world. We're all tempted by it. We all uh, want to kind of have the world take it easy on us. The world's your enemy, brethren. We can't get along with the world. It's not possible. So, uh, and the ultimate solution, really, I, you know, the, are you tired of being lied to? Well, yes. Uh, then what should we really desire most? To go to be with the man who said, I am the way, the truth, the truth, and the life. I can't wait to see Jesus Christ be given the mind of Christ. Then I shall know, even as I am also known. 1 Corinthians 13 talks about that, chapter 13. Um, it's going to be good to be, go to be with the Lord and He can show us the truth and teach us of His ways and have the mind of Christ finally and completely. The redemption of the purchased possession. Can't wait for that. But uh, if you're like me, then you're tired of being lied to. If you're one of the liars out there that's watching this video and, and coming here and seeing what all I'm saying so that you can try to counter me and whatever else, God have mercy on you. Your time is coming. Uh, your father, the devil, you're going to be spending eternity with him. I spend eternity with my father, the Lord Jesus Christ, the truth. Uh, you get to spend eternity with your father, the devil. So, but be encouraged, brethren. The lies are, are but temporary. The Lord is going to make things work out for His glory. That's going to be it. Thank you for watching.